Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Marinmay Pramanik. I teach Comparative Indian Language and Literature at the University of Calcutta. Today we will discuss classical western drama origins and development and this module is from the course Comparative Literature Drama in India. The content of this module is written by Dr. Vamsi Krishna Reddy, Assistant Professor NIT Raurkella. Drama has been one of the most unique modes of narrating a story and emotions through performance. Drama has been a method of expression since the ancient times when man initially started to communicate his experience and feelings, perhaps orally, maybe through move or rivalry to attentive colleagues assembled around a fire. According to Aristotle, dramatists represent people in action, unlike a third person narrative or the mixture of various narratives. Hence, drama is action, genealogically Greek word opera or drama means doing, action or performance. For both Aristotle and Plato, great western philosophers, drama is an example of mimesis, which means imitation. However, both perceive drama and mimesis differently, as rightly noted by INC, INC story and Erlen Allen in their seminal book, A Guide to Ancient Drama, as I quote, for Plato, mimesis was something to be discredited, something if inferior, which the ideal ruler of an ideal state would avoid. Plato would have agreed with Polonius in Hamlet to thin own self be true. But Aristotle found in mimesis not only something natural in human nature, but also something that was a pleasure and essential for human learning." Unquote. Hence, drama is doing or performing and similarly, human cultures always perform a multiple levels in different ways be used in all sorts of ways. With this nature of performativity, drama tends to keep cultural and historical events alive in the forms of legends and myths. Since the themes and subjects are derived from past, especially with an intention to bring our glory in it. Greek tragedy falls partly into this category. The most possible comparison with classical Greek drama can be from a Ramlila tradition in India, where myth and history is juxtaposed to provide a popular belief for Hindus to assert their past. Drama can also be used to provide moral instruction. Most of the religious themed plays revolve around gospels that reiterate the message of the God or its belief system. However, it is also interesting to have a look at what brings audience towards drama other than obvious reasons of religious and performativity. It is also believed that drama provides natural pleasure which is innately excites to humans and people watch formal performances because they render us pleasure, a relief from the routine, the joy of watching a plot unfolding and engaging with the characters and the catharsis involved with it. In this module, we attempt to provide basic idea of western classical drama while focusing mainly on different genres that constituted ancient Greek and Roman drama. Whenever we, we discuss about classical drama, we tend to have critical focus more on tragedy or on comedy. However, we either ignore or will have only a nodding glance at the other genre called uh, satire drama or satire play. This module covers a comprehensive description of classical drama, though Greek drama such as classical drama, renaissance drama, French neoclassical drama and modern drama. This module limits its, its 
scope and attempts to map the genealogy of classical western drama and its development. Now, let us uh, focus on components of classical western drama. The major components of drama are comedy, tragedy and satire play. We will look at each one in order to understand classical drama holistically. Comedy, the word comedy originates from a Greek word komoidia, which is a combination of two words komos, which means merry making or festal procession and oidos, which means a song. Thus, comedy is a happy song. We do not know how comic performances have originated. However, theorists note uh, several reasons uh, behind its origins. Firstly, comedy is propelled by some fertility rituals in which various dancers are decorated as animals and as satyrs. Secondly, a comedy is germinated from religious rituals that engaged uh, several jests, jets and, and their activities. Thirdly, it seems comedy evolved from phallus bearers in various processions. Not only is the genealogy of comedy untraced, we do not have any evidence on first date of its performance. However, what we know is that Susarian of Megara was credited with introducing comedy in Attica, the region where Athens is located. Although some evidence of comic performances do exist in the mid 6th century, the first set of comic performances in festivals in Athens are believed to have occurred around 486 BC at the city of Dinosia. Similar to Greek tragedies, the surviving Greek comedies were performed at festivals that usually honored Dionysus. Unlike tragedy writers who put on three tragedies and a satire play at Dionysia, comic poets present a single play. However, in and around 442 BC, both the tragedies and the comedies began to be performed at the Linnea, another festival that honors Dionysus at Athens many a times tragedy and comedy were performed in the same theatre, in the same theatre structure and used the same special visual effects such as a rolling platform used to show interior scenes and an arrangement that would suspend characters above the ground. Aristophanic comedy very often uses these devices in parody of tragedy. Moreover, Comedy had a huge chorus around 24 members who usually sing and dance during the performance. The manner in which the dance is composed in comedy is significantly differed from tragedy and tends to present wider and sexually suggestive content. Structure of comedy In classical comedy play, usually three actors perform a play. Hence, actors are expected to play multiple roles within the play. This method poses an immense challenge for actors because comedies tend to have more dialogues than in tragedies. Similar to tragic play, chorus or mask, however, masks certainly have uh, symbolisms and expressions that are designed to create laughter among audience. Naturally, costumes for comedy plays would also differ from tragic costumes. They get padded to provide additional humor with physical appearance. The language of comedy uh, was also uh, less formal and diction deployed in the play was, was more extensive use of alliteration, intended words, pun and play of words. Important play under comedy. Though 40 complete plays have survived at present, but the names of at least 150 comic playwrights are identified. Scholars have distinguished classical western comedy into three periods broadly as old comedy 500 uh, to 400 BC, middle comedy 400 to 30, uh, 325 BC and new comedy 
325 to 250 C. Among all three categories, we have more information about new committee represented by around 30 plays and some fragments of Minander, Plautus and Terence and the list about middle committee. Middle committee uh, captures the transition between old and new committee. Middle committees of Aristophanes represent a marked decrease in criticism on public figures and a reduced role for the chorus. The Paravasis had disappeared in this period. One of the leading representatives of this period was Alexis, who is said to have written 245 plays. And our knowledge about old comedy rests on the nine surviving plays of Aristophanes and the fragments of such playwrights as Cretinus, Eupolis and Pericrates. Old comedy is known for its wildness, obscenity and sexual humor with fantasy plots, such as men living with the birds in Aristophanes birds, famous, particip uh, famous politicians being raised from the dead in Eupolis demons. These plays usually comment on intellectual happenings, current trends and political affairs of Athens. Athenian leaders such as Pericles, Cleon, Alcibiades and Hyperbolus are often the object of mocking in these plays of Aristophanes. Cretinus and Euphilus in some of the old comedy plays mythological figures may have been attributed to political leaders of the time. In Cretinus, uh, Dionysus as Alexander, Dionysus uh, may have uh, represented uh, Pericles. Pericles was uh, also believed to be uh, behind the figure of Zeus in Cretinus Nemesis. Another significant feature of old comedy was that the chorus is represented strange being as animals such as birds, frogs, goats, wolves. In most of the Aristophanes plays had the feature called Parabasis, in which the chorus address the audience as if they are the playwright himself. In the era of new comedy, surprisingly political mocking and satire had almost completely vanished and mythological references and its attribution to different stakeholders of society have diminished along with obscenity. Structurally, chorus appearance of new comedy had been restricted to occur between a play's five acts. At this juncture, plots and characters had become more stereotypical and stagnant. New comedy started focusing on themes to which everyone can relate, love and marriage. The players um, involved in such type of comedy were the common figures of society of that period started getting central role in the play, such as nagging wife, her son, the, free, uh, the, the freeborn father, the bagot warrior, the, the parasite, girl next door, the prostitute, the pimp, slaves, cooks and nurses. This period gener uh, generated humor through characterization and situating them in a context. Next is tragedy. The word tragedy is derived from a Greek word phragoidia, which means a goat song, though we understand the obvious connection between tragedy and song, but the connection with goats is not particularly clear. For comedy, two cities, Linnea and Dionysia, were the host to celebrate in the honor of the god Dionysus who is very often is associated with goats, according to ancient Greek tradition. Jews changed Dionysus, Dionysus into a goat to escape from Hera. Hence, Dionysus is described to be in the company of satyrs who are part goat and part human. Apart from this reference, we do not have any other source to trace the link between goat, song and tragedy. Since we do not fully understand the links, genealogy of the tragedy as genre had been difficult to draw. The towns of Athens and 
Sicyon believed to be birthplace of Greek tragedy. Origins The Suda, a lexicon from 10th century C, attributes to Arian of Corinth for inventing tropos or tragic mode. And subsequently, music as important component had been added to this genre. Though scholars of classical drama do not acknowledge as the pioneer of tragedy, most recognizes the presence of Doric people living southern Greece, component in Greek tragedy, especially in its verse entries. Aristotle also attempted and made significant work to trace the origins of tragedy in his seminal text Poetics. However, his work gave rise furthermore confusion and controversy over the origins of tragedy. Aristotle had provided several theories behind the origin of tragedy. He argued that tragedy is developed over the years with improvisation of various form plays. And he also presented that tragedy had been evolved from dithyram. At the same time, he also suggested that tragedy had its origins in satyr play. Hence, there were multiple interpretation and viewpoints about the genealogy of tragedy within the work poetics. Structure, structure of the tragedy. Any scholarship, one classical tragedy as a genre is essentially based on 32 complete plays that are attributed to three important Greek playwrights, Ascylus, Sophocles and Euripides. The earliest tragedies were believed to be enacted by Thespis between 535 to 532 BC, though we have uh, little evidence to back the claim. Thespis is credited for introducing the actor and Aeschylus is attributed to second and Sophocles the third. However, all these assertions had not yet been confirmed, because few episodes in Aeschylus Orestia had three actors and Sophocles's Oedipus at, at Colonus surely had four actors. Most Greek tragedies had seven or eight active speaking characters. Apart from chorus and actors would play multiple characters. Both gender characters are played by male actors. Usually the tragic chorus consisted of 12 members for both dancing and singing, but Sophocles is said to have increased the number to 15, similar to comedy. The actors and chorus sang songs with a fixed pattern of rhythm. Unlike comedy, the importance of chorus in the play had never been diminished. The chorus and the actors perform with mask scene, which usually costumes for the players were very sober and simple. For example, Acharnians, Aristophanes and Euripides were known for introducing his characters in rags. However, not all costumes used in tragedy were simple. For example, Aeschylus text uh, Persians attempts to portray the royalty of Persian court and the costumes were intricately dressed and the costumes of the furies in uh, Aeschylus Eumenides are considered to be one of the remarkable costumes during that period. Both tragedy and comedy were staged in the same theatre. The plays were all performed outdoors and during the daytime. Similar to comedy, tragedy also employed techniques such as the a rolling space used to show interior scenes and the uh, 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 technique uh, deployed to suspend characters above the ground. However, compared with comedy, tragedy had used few stage properties such as sword, sceptre, bow and funeral urn. Both tragedy and comedy had similar structural features such as the prologue, exodus, episode and choral songs. Tragedy, however, did not use parabasis, in which the chorus address the audience as if the playwright were speaking to them and agon or debate. Now, uh, let us uh, uh, take names of few uh, famous play or tragedy. Tragedy, especially from Greek tradition, also did not deal with social concerns, politics and intellectual trends unlike its counterpart comedy. 
However, the treatment of contemporary issues of the period had been dealt at subtle way but not explicitly. In general, Greek tragedy plucked its stories from mythology. Homer's Iliad and Odyssey were significant sources of material. Achaelus, the prominent hero of Iliad, appears in the title of at least eight plays by Greek tragedians. The major characters such as um, Andromache, uh, Cyclops, Hecabe, Reusas and Trojan women all have direct or indirect connections to the Homeric epics. Various characters of Cadmus and his descendants who ruled uh, Thebes were also the significant subject of many Greek tragedies. Many plays had Oedipus uh, in their titles and characters like Jason Barbarian Bride, Medea were also quite popular subject of tragedies. Since the content of Greek tragedy was relatively limited, playwrights often um, uh, tend to employ the same characters and themes. For example, Sophocles, Aeschylus and Euripides written plays entitled um, Philoctetes, in which content revolves around Orestes killing of his mother. Hence, after 5th century, there is an attempt to look beyond this tradition and started absorbing new material. This attempt is shown in the works of the tragedian Agathon, who wrote a tragedy, Antheus or Athos, in which the characters were fictional and not based on characters from mythology. And even Euripides, Iphigenia in Tauris, Helen and Ion are example of this new kind of drama. All three plays all uh, begin on a trajectory of tragedy, but have a, a happy ending and the surface level uh, Ion, be, Ion by Euripides, uh, Crivesa is raped, she subsequently abandons her child. The child is gummed by uh, someone else and eventually Ion and Crivesa met, uh, recognize one another through things left with the infant. Likewise, Menander's uh, arbitration in which uh, Pamphile is also raped, eventually becomes pregnant, marries a Caristius and subsequently abandon the child. Slaves find the child and infant's identity is revealed through items left with the baby as the child of Pamphilus. And that uh, Caristius was, uh, was the rapist. This tend in the content reflects the constraints of tragedy in terms handling uh, various themes. Understanding the Greek tragedy is hampered by the survival of only 32 plays by only 3 poets, but knowledge of Roman tragedy is made even more difficult since only 10 tragedies written in Latin survive till now. Moreover, most of the survived plays are attributed to only one author, Seneca. Most of his plays were heavily influenced by Greek tragedies. Most of the Senecan plays bearing few such as Thyestes and Octavia were influenced by the Greek tragedies of Aeschylus, Sophocles and Euripides. Even Octavia, which is uh, loosely based on historical events, dates back to Greek plays written on mythological themes. Now, uh, let us talk about satire drama. Satire play is one of uh, the, the elusive and controversial kinds of ancient drama. Euripides, uh, Euripides Alcestis is typically called as a satire play. Satire plays have uh, basically the same features, uh, tragedies such as choral songs, prologue, episode, agon, parodos and an exodus in poetics. Aristotle argues that tragedy evolved from the satire play. However, modern scholars contest the assumption and the accuracy of this ass assertion by arguing uh, that earliest satire plays had been staged only after the foray of tragedy. In this kind of drama, the first person 
to compose satyr plays was the tragedian Pratinus of Pleius, who is believed to have written around 32 satyr plays, although only four titles are known and only and only one of these can positively be identified um, as satiric or wrestling satire. Satire plays are very often humorous in content and themes again with the exception of Euripides uh, Alcestis and provides a contrast of, um, of the tragedies that preceded them to the stage. Beside, uh, besides these two plays, numerous extant titles and fragments of satire plays help us gain a better understanding of this uh, elusive genre's themes. In addition to the comic elements, portrayal of aggressive sexuality and the consumption of wine are common features in these plays. This kind of drama seems to be propagating some sort of liberation from an oppressive master, Euripides, uh, Cy Cyclops and most of these plays encounter with some kind of novelty. Hermes Lyre in uh, Searchers or a new person, uh, the infant Hermes uh, Searchers and, and uh, athletic activi uh, activities especially uh, wrestling uh, seem to be common in satire plays, although the uh, satires uh, themselves considered to be uh, spectators to be uh, to the events rather than participants. Other aspects of classical western drama. It is important to look at other aspects of related drama to understand classical western drama comprehensively. The dramatic festivals. Athens drama was principally produced at two of the festivals on the name of the god Dionysius. At the Linaia and at the city Dionysia. Here the drama was essentially a form of religious expression, though the festivals were conducted honoring the god Dionysus and the plays performed in a theatre at the side his sacred uh, precinct. They were also sponsored by the state and performed on uh, state occasions run by the officials of Athens and most importantly this activity is part and parcel of the communal life of the city or polis. Dionysos was honored at Athens with a number of celebrations such as the rural Dionysia festivals held with locals of Athens, the Linaia in late January, the Anthesteria or flower time in mid February and the city Dionysia in late March or early April. There is some evidence that popular plays are restaged at the various celebrations of the rural Dionysia around Attica. But the two principal festivals for the performance of drama were the Linaia and the city Dionysia at Athens. Now, let us talk about the actors. In Greek theatre, men played both the roles of gender. In the initial days of Greek drama, only the chorus comes to the stage later. A single actor used joined the chorus. The usual Greek word for actor is Hippocrates, means explainer and this term indicates fundamental relationship between the chorus and the actor. The tradition, one solo actor continued until Aeschylus introduced a second actor and that Sophocles introduced a third. Although uh, clearly three actors are needed at certain points in Aeschylus uh, Orestia, while the number of actors eventually increased to three, two major acting styles, the grand style and the realistic style emerged from Greek drama. As the names imply, the grand style deployed more glossy and grand language and costumes than the realistic style. Aeschylus is known for his extremely complex vocabulary, remarkable dressing with his characters and introduced his heroes who speak and conduct in a manner that is larger than life on the stage. Euripides in contrast often uses uh, rags 
on his heroes and they speak in a much simpler and sober fashion. Around 450 BC, actor started uh, competing for a prize in the dramatic festivals. And with occasional exceptions, this ended the practice of playwrights acting in their own plays. This particular development is believed to have played uh, important role in the rise of actor and the decrease in the importance of the, of the chorus. Actors became increasingly professionalized and self-centric with the aura that has been created behind actors. Acting guilds also started in uh, Rome as early as the uh, second century BC. Roman people considered acting a vile profession and, and uh, whereas Greeks treated actors as ordinary citizens. Probably one can draw genealogy of stardom in contemporary art and culture industries. Now, let us conclude our discussion. The discussion on classical western drama has clearly shown that it is a unique literature rich in imagination and culture. As a literary and historical document, classical drama offers scholars and students golden information to be understood, analyzed, criticized and interpreted. Most of the literary theories uh, can be understood while reading this text closely. From neocriticism to modern theories, classical drama provides valuable insights. Understanding the classical periods is essential to proceed further into renaissance and modern literary periods. Even to understand contemporary drama, one needs to holistically look at various aspects of classical drama in order to have better understanding on literature in specific and life in general. Thank you.